It's always a bit like a lucky dip, this segment. I never quite know what the doc from Utog is up to, but he, oh, he's absolutely hit the nail right on the head this morning. He's going to give us some advice on how to avoid diseases like Phytophthora with a P-H-T-O-P-H-T-H-O-R-A, Phytophthora, and Pythium in your garden. And we've already had one call about what I think was Phytophthora, but it might be Pythium. But who, you know, like it's a big problem in our gardens this morning with all this rain we had last year, and it's impacting. Yui, a very good morning to you. I think we actually covered this about a year ago, but I thought considering how wet it's been, it's probably worth revisiting. So, you know, both uh, Phytophthora and uh, Pythium are not actually fungi, although a lot of people think they are. They are what's called a water mold or an oomycete. And the name in itself, water mold, really suggests that they love moist soils and waterlogged soils. So they, they travel where the water goes. So they form these spores and they move with the water. So they go from the high spots in your garden to the low-lying area or down the slope of your property. So these spores, they can live a really long time, a few years even in your soil, especially if it's, if it's uh, moist. So, you know, in years where the soil never, <coughs> excuse me, never dries out, they just hang around. And considering how wet it's been, it's probably not a great surprise that these pathogens have really, you know, wreaked havoc in so many plants. So most people think that they only attack the roots of the plant. And during the moist conditions, there is a preference for to attack the roots. But in winter, when it's cold and wet, they attack the roots and they also attack other parts of your plant. Now look, certainly Phytophthora and Pythium are a problem that is very, very hard to beat. So how can we reduce or maybe even eliminate these pathogens in our garden soils, uh, Yui? Well, Phytophthora is particularly problematic as you don't even need damage to the plant itself for that pathogen to get in. So things to do is to avoid splashing water on plants that's come in contact with the soil. That will spread the spores to, to the leaves. And this is an issue for things like vegetables and many of the low-lying shrubs. Uh, good drainage is really important. So having soil which doesn't get waterlogged. Now, I know I say that easily, but it's not an easy thing to achieve. So for sandy soils, it's less of a problem. But for heavy soils, using organic mulches can help. You know, as they break down over time, they loosen up the soil and they allow better drainage. When the soil does get waterlogged, the real problem is it collapses, and then that means you get poor infiltration, poor drainage once the water is there. So drainage channels, ag pipes can divert some of the water. Even something simple like spreading some gypsum on clay can help with the drainage and aerating your soil by breaking it up with a garden fork like we spoke last week. And in lawns in particular, they are really prone to pythium. So eliminating the pathogen is almost impossible. And because they're not fungi, the fungicides simply don't work on these uh, pathogens. Yes, you know, and that takes me back to a class when I was maybe 16 or 17 years of age. Uh, yeah, eliminating the pathogen is almost impossible and fungicides don't work because they're not fungi. I can remember my teacher telling me that in class all those years ago. So what about biological controls, Huey? Well, we've done some work with Alan from Freshwater Farms. I think he yes. spoke to you l last week. So. And we were able to stop uh, Phytophthora on his farm, at least the spread of it. And uh, in another trial, we in New South Wales, we actually controlled Pythium and Turf. So the microbes we used in those trials are actually the same ones we use in Populate. So there's certainly the potential for biological control. And I think, you know, if Populate use, if people use Populate virtually like an, as an insurance policy against uh, Phytophthora and Pythium, it may not be a bad way for gardeners to go. I know, you know, it's... Uh, one of those things, when you lose a, a beautiful tree that you've maybe had in your garden for 20 or 30 years, it really is quite heartbreaking. And, and you leave that gap in your whole garden, it destroys the look. So, you know, a little bit of care now, and maybe you can save those guys. Phytophthora and Pythium are likely to be a problem again this year, considering that their spores are still around in the ground, listeners. With winter approaching, it may be a good time to try populate to control these pathogens. Now, Populate is available at Bunnings. It wasn't, but it now is. Other hardware outlets like Mitre 10 and other hardware stores, and of course, all our good mates at the garden centres, Populate. It's uh, just absolutely becoming a, an essential part of our gardening kit, for sure. Thank you for that, Yui. A really important update. And of course, you're quite right. When we interviewed Alan on the show here from Freshwater Farm, he was, uh, he was originally pretty downhearted and then suddenly came back 
after a chat with uh, with you, uh, and of course uh, it saved his property and saved his whole business and a family business, and it's now uh, back on top and. Uh, all his gear from, uh, I think it's uh, Big W, I think he's selling his freshwater farm pro product through. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, it, was a, it was a great success story, I think. Great so, uh, success story. Every now and then you do get wins. <laughs> yeah, it was a real win, a real win with Populate. Mate, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on that. Not a problem, Graham. Have a great week. You yeah. too, pal. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Well, we've been talking about it. You heard it first here, and you continue to hear it first here on the 2GB Garden Clinic.